Now, if you're a bird watcher, it normally means that you can do your passion in relative comfort. You could sit indoors and watch the birds on the bird feeder. You could sit in a hide with a thermos flask in your binoculars, or you can wrap up warm and go around the woods. But if your passion is insects, then the conditions aren't always quite as glamorous. West Pembrokeshire is home to a woman with a passion for insects. Sarah Bainan is an entomologist, and she manages the family farm to encourage all types of insects to thrive. Spring is the best time to survey the hedgerows and pastures to see if this is working. We've got, ah, okay, quite a lot of dock on the side here, so most people would think dock, weed, but to these little guys, Doc is home. They're the farmer's best friends because Doc is a real weed of agricultural land. And these beetles will feed on the Doc leaves, both as adults and larvae. You can see he's playing dead. He's pulled his legs right into himself. And normally, if I weren't here to hold him on, he would have fallen off this leaf. That's one of their really great predator avoidance strategies. In the, if anything's going to grab them, they pull their legs together, drop to the ground, and become pretty invisible. This is one of our largest beetles. Its wing cases are fused together down the center. It doesn't fly, so it needs some way of protecting itself. If it gets picked up, for example, by a bird, it will emit this foul-tasting red insect blood through its nose, which will make the bird spit it out and the beetle lives another day because it bleeds through its nose. It's a bloody-nosed beetle. Beetles are plentiful all across the farm, but some of the most extraordinary insect behaviour is found in perhaps the least likely place. A dung pat. This is covered with yellow dung flies. We've got the large males. They're golden yellow colour, big furry flies with lots of yellow hairs on their front legs. And the females are much, much smaller, a sort of dull brown greeny colour. Most people probably assume that these flies are here to eat the dung. Not so. These flies are here to breed. The male dung flies will sit on the dung pat and wait for a female. We can see males tussling and fighting over females and also over space on the dung pat. They'll actually fight to the death sometimes. It's really like a gladiatorial contest. The males have got really strong front legs to enable them to grab the females and to hold the females down. The mating itself will last about 30 minutes, quite a long time if you're a fly. The male will actually then guard the female all the way through until she lays her eggs. So he kind of just walks around on top of her, waiting for her to be ready to lay. The eggs are really tiny. You'll see them as little cream dots on the top of a dung pad. The females don't just lay their eggs anywhere on the dung pad. Imagine you were the size of a yellow dung fly. That dung pat would seem huge. And what the females do is they actually lay their eggs on little hills. This prevents the eggs from getting waterlogged. Then as soon as she's laid her eggs, he's off to find someone else. This frenzy of activity not only provides for the next generation of dung flies, it's also vital for the farmland itself. Dung flies are really, really important in ecosystem functioning. Their larvae live within the dung pat, eating it and breaking it down. By doing that, they're pulling the nutrients down into the soil, preventing dung pats like this sitting on the surface for years on end. I think everyone should go and have a poke around in a cow pat. It's, it's fascinating. 